Sometimes we, we end up doing all of the outreach and that will end up increasing the amount of time that we spend on it. But other times the towns will take it, will take charge of the outreach. They'll set up the, the, the venue, they'll set up the, the, they'll send out the emails, they'll do the, the mailings, whatever it needs to get done. Um, and that cuts down the amount of time. In that case, all we're really doing is working with the town to set up the format and to finalize the agenda. And then we obviously will usually come in and, and um, facilitate those meetings. The, the reason why I ask is typically when there's been public forums and we've had this public hearing ongoing now, it's almost six months. And, you know, you may get a dozen people show up. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'd rather do is um, I could probably get a survey online on the website. We'll use the same master plan questions that we used in our original survey. I'll get that online. There's probably about 30, 40 questions, a common area. Um, at least this way here, we'll probably get 100, 200 responses. Mm -hmm. And we'll, I'll, I'll tabulate them up and, you know, uh, but that extra 10 hours that we save by you not doing that, uh, we really need to figure out what to do with our APR land mm -hmm. to get it out of hibernation. Uh, I believe that Dudley, next to Amherst has got some the most a protected APR land in the state. I'm looking through it right now too and I, I'm working with the assessor's office to get a map of so not just the APR land but also the chapter 61A land. Yeah. So so, so how do we get those pieces of land actively farming again? How do how do we I mean the, the idea has been thrown in previous public hearings about helping find programs to grow hops, barley, um, there's wild grapes that grow all over the town. It seems to be good. You know, our vineyards, mm -hmm. something that could be real here. Um, and because if we can get that agricultural land back to being used, because right now what happens is the trees just grow and grow and the town doesn't get any taxes. But if, if we can get that land out of hibernation, usually there's vehicles and there's excise taxes and there's jobs. Uh, one of the big challenges is, you know, we have all these kids in the summer times, there's no job, summer jobs available for them anymore. And as restaurants become more automated and r with robotics, um, we're going to need stuff for our kids to do, mm -hmm. you know. So if, if we can figure out a real plan for the farmers or even just a start, mm -hmm. I mean, is it federal assistance to help them get this land back? Is there some sort of grants for crop trans, transis, you know, transitions. Um, but, but having that land sit there with very few t taxes being paid on it, growing trees that are eventually going to be cut, it's going to become forest land again. Yeah. Well, then that's, that's an, I think that's an interesting point because I think it plays into what we were talking about with the the importance of having a business and landowner centered forum that's just talking to those people because that would be a great population of people to get some information from and one of the things about business owners and farmers in particular is they don't take very well to people they don't know just calling them and asking them for 20 30 minutes a couple hours of their time yeah. without any value so and that's why having somebody who, who is already connected to the community is very very helpful um, because that would be, I think that, that seeing what their needs are, what their constraints, what they see as the problem that's holding back growth in farming would be in, in incredibly helpful. Um, and if that's the, the focus that the town would want to go with, that's absolutely something that we can accommodate. If, you would, if you're more interested in looking at one particular sector, sector versus another, because we're sort of taking it from more of a, holi a holistic, systemic yeah. uh, approach. So we're looking at the college and how it connects to the, the businesses and things like that. But obviously, if we wanted to take a more narrow approach in this phase and focus in on specific sectors like the farming sector or some or, or just take those it. 10 hours that would have been used for the citizen input, we'll take care of that ourselves. We'll get the survey up. We'll, you know, tally all the results mm -hmm. and that extra 10 hours that, that, that you no longer have to spend on that. Mm -hmm. Look at the APR land. What can we do with the farmers? What can we do? I'd rather have the 10 hours invested there. I don't know, open to the board. What's your individual feelings on this? I'll start with you, Joanne. Do you have any opinion on it? Nope, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen? I 
think that we should. Okay. I think uh, what you had said about the business owner group uh, is is in, is very very important, and whether that you know not only. Uh, you know the business owners but if we need had a, a group of like you said the farmers to actually get them in the room and to talk and to get that you know feedback is we, we would need to do that I understand what you're saying John or let me uh, let me just make sure I'm clear so what you're saying is on that piece the input from residents the open forum that we would be or the 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 group that we would be uh, getting together you're saying just taking that piece out exactly not, still, not still the business do the, owners no, no I, I think it's a great idea to have the business owners sit down you know you know whether it's a launch or or just a just a, a meeting where a round table and, and to have Nichols present there and invite Henke Sass and Webco and and those other businesses and small employers as well and the bread and butter you know the retail establishments the restaurants you know insurance companies real estate brokers um, I had a great conversation with the uh, the little coffee shop uh, that just opened up uh, or it doesn't just didn't just open up it's been open for what a couple years now um, but they were saying that they might be interested in in having this conversation too because they they're they had a lot of uh, potential input that they could provide to how the they're interacting with the students, how they're interacting with the town, and mm -hmm. and all of it. So, yeah, and you know, a p part of me says, you know, right. So, you, so you've got the Gentex, the web goes, and, and you've got the business side, and and then you've got Nichols, mm -hmm. and, and so a part of me says, you know, if there is a way, you should almost have a one-on-one -on -one with Nichols to understand, you know what. You know, I don't know if Nichols has a, a 20 or 30 year plan, <laughs> you know, you know, what's down the road. I mean, you know, how much student enrollment, what, what, what is the community lacking that they would like to see? And maybe it's an economic opportunity for people. I mean, I was heartbroken. Uh, we had discussed Airbnbs, right? Because, I mean, Dudley's never going to be a place for hotels. And you're never going to have a Marriott in Dudley. But you do have a lot of nice old farmhouses and nice things and so I say geez you know I think we need a set of you know Airbnb regs and maybe we can you know do it that way but I noticed the Senate decided that they're going to take all the tax money from that in this budget yeah. so you know the states here they're here to help <laughs> <laughs> so but but there are enormous economic opportunities that that's that if you look at other college towns that are conducive with maintaining the character of the town but also providing that extra quality of service, the recreational opportunities we had talked about. Wouldn't it be great to have a little restaurant district? You know, I mean, we, Dudley doesn't want hammer factories. We, you know, Dudley wants clean industries and, you know, having a nice little restaurant district with craft breweries or even the wineries goes into line with that. Could I ask yeah. just one more question in regards to getting uh, these, uh, you know, a group of these business owners t uh, together, you know, finding the right people to talk to, as you had said. Um, have you found other towns or have you had experience in, like, how would we do that? What's the best venue to set that up? How, what's the best way to reach out? Well, it changes from town to town. One of the towns I worked with recently, they actually had uh, an active working group with some of the key uh, property owners that were downtown that they met a couple of times a quarter. And so they just current, they just shoehorned us into that conversation, mm -hmm. and that worked out very well. Um, but usually, in you know, in most towns, there's it's either going to be the uh, the chamber of commerce is going to have those contacts, or uh, in a place with a lot of colleges, there's going to be people in uh, the universities that are going to have a lot of those contacts. Um, so it's really, it, it changes from town to town, and that's sort of where uh, uh, having your feedback and having your assistance of the members on this committee would be extremely helpful because that would help us sort of facilitate those connections. My initial thought was talking, trying to get in touch with somebody at Nichols College, thinking that they might be able to at least point me in the right direction. Um, but I don't know if that's how Nichols interfaces with the town. It's just something we have to, to, to explore in the next few weeks. So on October 12th, the Webster Dudley Business Alliance is actually having uh, a meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, the topic is Main Street has too many vacant storefronts. Where did the restaurants, local shops, and bakeries go? Are solar farms and marijuana distributors suitable replacements? So uh, they're having a presenter, Jim Metcalf, SCORE mentor, 12 years. Um, but I would say 
that the Webster Dudley Business Alliance is the venue and the organization, and you could probably fit into, if not, pull something from this meeting, maybe, maybe their next meeting we can get be the agenda item. Mm -hmm. um, but that that's going to give you kind of a broad spectrum of, of businesses across Dudley, but still. Um, we almost probably want to have a separate round table with the Gentex, with Webco, with Henke Sass, because they're just in a different kind of class. And I'm sorry, what date was that meeting? This is uh, October 12th at Point Breeze, between okay. 6 and 8 p.m. It's open to the public. There is a $10 per person, but you're going to get choice of chicken, fish, or vegetarian dinner. Oh, nice. So I can't beat that. Okay. Well, and that's, you know, those are the types of um, connections that it's, that may be able to get us through the door with organizations, with, with the bigger companies in town. Um, now, the one thing I would, uh, I would, if I could push back just a little bit on the, uh, the public input piece, the one thing that we see with failing to really engage the residents in a lot of the towns we work with, the, the danger with that is that we end up creating strategies or we end up uh, uh, creating uh, goals and that when we do end up becoming the but putting them before the residents because they don't have any buy-in because they didn't hear about it ahead of time that creates negative uh, associations with it and one of the goals with doing this sort of uh, a more robust group exercise is that if we can get enough people in the room to have a conversation to help people craft the goals for, with, from, from all areas, from residents, business owners, from whatever, it, it, it cuts a lot of that off. So it, it ends up making the plan a lot stronger if we can do that. And, um, you know, as a public agency, it is one of our, our, uh, um, our goals to try to, to, to be as inclusive as possible in all of the plans that we do. So, uh, you know, we can have, a, I think we, we can discuss um, how we want that public piece to do, but I do definitely think that that's something, uh, that, that's something that needs to be yeah. a very key part of it. And, and let me apologize, because, you know, maybe I, I just wasn't clear. Uh, we, we have been very transparent. Uh, we have been very engaging to the public. Um, the Webster Times has been a fantastic tool of ours, keeping people informed, the website. Um, you know, the, the YouTube videos, you know, people do watch them. I'm not saying ignore the public. I'm saying that if I put a survey online, I bet you I can get 200 responses versus 15 people in a room. Now, we could put as one of the, the questions is if there is a public forum, would you like to attend? And then if they say yes, I'll get their email addresses and we'd always hold a public mm -hmm. forum. Okay. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, the only way this is going to fly is, is to have public support. Well, no, and, and I didn't mean to insinuate that, yeah, so, okay. that the committee was being untransparent in any way. I just wanted to make sure that that, that was on the record and that we were discussing that open before, you know, before the, this was, was over. Um, but we've done uh, surveys with a lot of towns for a lot of different projects um, and getting, we can get some pretty good information and some pretty good uh, uh, responses from something like that. So we can definitely explore that. So, so I was saying anything yeah. to be humorous or anything, but tr the truth is, if you if you offer food, you're more likely to get more participation. Well, that's true. <laughs> Bring a few pizzas; it really helps. Mm -hmm. uh, our annual budget's a hundred bucks. <laughs> so unless Sorry. someone's got a bunch of uh, coupons, we're <laughs> 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 gonna get one of the local Dudley pizzerias to donate the pies. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we want our you know business owners there too. But I I, I agree. I mean, I think that. Um, you know, if you if you really think that we can get 200 or more responses, um, I think that's valuable information. But I also agree that uh, that having people engaged and being face to face with people and really getting that kind of feedback uh, is also extremely important. So I, I would be like a combination of the two. I think um, you know uh, would be great. I just I, I'd like to know. Uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see how many people do turn out, uh, you know, even if we're very transparent on the website and our communications, you know, maybe we just need to, you know, 
say that there will be food there or something just to get just to get more buy-in you know just to get more people to show up instead of just having a you know uh, a very small handful if if that to show up to any of the meetings well think, oh sorry Don. I think we're going to break up into working groups or anything like that determine what kind of venue you'd have whether you just have some room like this or whether you want to have it say the like cafeteria in one of the schools or something you want to have people who break you know break up groups and yeah, typically we would you would want to have people yeah. breaking out, have the space for people to break into little groups, so that way that you can do, you could do some sort of exercise where you can get some feedback and have people actually crafting some of the goals and and objectives that we could that would then inform how what the the final product of the plan was. Uh, but the thing I was going to say was that the you know the other thing we also have to keep in mind is that this is just the first part of a two to three part potential three part plan. Um, so what we if we do, if there's anything that we don't we aren't able to do in this phase given you know time budgetary constraints what have you there are there's going to be uh, opportunities to do things in subsequent phases so that's uh, I, I do definitely think that in the short term uh, we should be focusing on uh, trying to get the connection to the the business owners do that if we can come up with a roundtable great if all it ends up being is a, a series of phone calls that uh, I get to make that's we can do that too um, but just getting that feedback I think is going to be very vital and um, if we want to consider doing a survey as part of an initial step of a wider process that's going to end up going on before we get to the end of this longer project then I think we uh, that's something we could we could definitely accommodate all right so to, to be specific uh, on the business forum we're gonna start with the Webster Dudley Business Alliance and see if we can actually get on one of their agendas okay. um, I'll give everybody some information uh, the 12th I have the handouts here for that event uh, but that's probably a good one to go to, to, to get some one-on-one -on -one time and see if the Webster Dudley Business Alliance, since they're already in place, they have the, the list, the communication, that's probably our best bet for a business forum. Um, the Nichols, Hanky, Webco, mm -hmm. um, I think, I mean, I think Webco is either our largest or second largest taxpayer in the town, I think. Second. second. Nichols is, well, second largest employer, I think. Yeah, so... I think we should work around their schedules and get some one-on-one -on -one time with at least our, our largest employers in town, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the top five employers, and, and give them the time that, that they need because we may have to work around their schedule. If we can get them all together, great. Mm -hmm. It would be good for their own personal networks as well, but, you know, they're busy, busy people. Well, uh, and we can definitely, um, if, if it ends up being a situation where you know, we can – we can only get a few people in the room at a time, but we have a larger number of people that, that we can talk to. We just can't get them all in the room at the same time. Um, I would be more than happy to work with you and Don or whoever else in the committee would like to, to work with us on this to craft a series of standardized questions that we can go through so everybody's asked the same thing and we, we all are we're, we're collecting data that, that we can compare, you know, apples to apples when we're actually processing this later. All right. So. And then the third aspect that we'll start before we set up a citizen or public forum, let me, let, me, let me get a program, throw it on the website to do the survey. I'll, I'll send the survey questions out to everybody first, make sure we, we, we cover everything. So the initial draft will literally be the same master plan survey questions we asked. Back then, we didn't have computers, so we had to actually absorb the postage to mail them out. <laughs> so we'll, we'll let the, the Telegram know, we'll let the Times know, and and the website that there's a survey out there once the questions are good. If you want to add any questions, and then we'll put in a spot there, hey, if we held a public forum, would you like to come? Mm -hmm. All right, and, and if we get 20, 30 people, that's fantastic. That'd be wonderful. I think we're yeah. overlooking some of the obvious, and that's that when you want to get the opinion of people who are in business, then go where the people who are in business go. So if you're talking about going to a Webster Dudley Business Alliance meeting, why not have your question or your survey there that those people who are in business could fill out? Secondly, the Chamber of Commerce has a big event coming up in October. Why don't we have a booth or something to try and put questions? Because you'll have both the public and people who are in business setting up booths. I mean, it's right under our nose. It's that 
everybody here does not belong to all of those organizations, so you don't see them. I go to the, I see you at the Chamber of Commerce. I'm at the Webster Dudley Business Alliance. I don't see anybody else here from Webster Dudley Business Alliance. So I think if we're gonna put ourselves out there, then we really have to do that and go where those people are gathering. Not play roundup of tracking them all down on our own when they're at a gathering hmm. on a regular basis. And that's, that, that's been in the works with the Chamber of Commerce for a couple of months. Do you know, and the, if we, do you know the date? Off the top of my head, I don't, and I have a booth there, but I, I sent my money and I haven't remembered. The other part is if you were looking to get to farmers, the, the, cha the Grange has never come in here. I would have thought that that might have been a key tool to get information through the Grange of what those people are thinking. I think we're trying to play Roundup on small scale, and to an extent, why don't people come to our meetings? We ran them for two years. Why? Because at 7 o'clock at night, they drove home when you're home your home, your survey is a better alternative. I'm more apt to fill out the survey, send it to you, yet go to my Webster Dudley Business Alliance meeting and chamber meeting. So I think, I think that, that your survey is very important. I'd rank it up there as number one. And then those organizations where people are meeting who are business people is the next thing I'd be looking at to try and get under their nose. Uh, I think that that sounds like a, 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 an excellent strategy. The only thing I, uh, I would say is that that would be, if that was the way that the committee would want to do it, that it would end up, uh, a lot of that would have to end up falling to the committee. Um, we can absolutely work on drafting the, uh, the language of the questions that we would want to do. Um, we would definitely work with uh, analyzing all of it and making that part of the final report. But when we come down to uh, uh, being able to go to multiple events, then we end up coming into questions of, uh, this is a budgeted project, so it's, it does have a, a, a finite uh, amount of time that we can devote to it. So we wouldn't necessarily be able to go to multiple, like I, CMRPC would not be able to, to go to multiple events. Um, however, if the committee was able and willing to attend some of these uh, with a, with a, uh, a an, armed with a series of questions that the whole committee worked on um, and take notes with the, on that conversation, then I think that strategy could work very well. All right. Uh, question about the, uh, the asset inventory that you're doing now. Mm -hmm. um, is it going to be as specific as saying, okay, look, Here's 100 acres along, say, Schofield Ave, that if you put restaurants in here, this is the maximum tax revenue you're going to get. If you put another hanky sass there, this is the tax revenue you can expect from that. If you put nothing there, this mm -hmm. is the tax revenue. You know, sort of this is what the expense would be mm -hmm. versus the income. Is, is, are you going to go into that kind of detail? Not at this stage. We aren't going to be going into that kind of detail. The extent of the detail that we were that we we're going to be going into is identifying where all the existing businesses are, identifying where the clusters are, and identifying where the open land still is. And we'll have the contextual information regarding what it's zoned and what uh, um, infrastructure is in place. Uh, so we're going to be looking at the water and sewer. We'll be looking at the power, things like that. Um, and with um, some assessment as to whether or not it's equal, you know, it, we could count it as pad ready, as, as developable at this point. But we wouldn't be running any type of scenarios at this point to, to see if there would be added benefit from one type of development versus another. If that's something that the town would like, that is something that we could definitely discuss as part of subsequent phases, because we do have the capacity to do that. But that just that bit, that's a whole process in and of itself, and it would be something that we wouldn't have the capacity to do in this part of the project. Will we get a listing of, um, in our industrial 130 zone, there is out of a thousand acres, there's 750 that still are available. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the stuff you're going to give us now. That's the level of detail that we would be looking All at. All right. So it's going to be 10,000 yeah. foot. And within a certain measure, we've done some uh, constraint analysis before. I don't think we're going to be doing anything new, but we we will be able to look at some of these parcels, and be able to say, 
this one has X number of slope, this one's on a wetland, and we can take that out, and we can do that kind of calculation to show that what your net developable land is going to be, um, but that's about as far as uh, we'll, we'll have the capacity to do at this stage. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Any questions to the audience for them? Feel free to jump in if you'd like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd just like to say that the Delhi Conservation Land Trust has spent many hours discussing the APR program and trying to figure out ways to promote agriculture in the town of Dudley. Uh, there's many challenges involved with that, so you know we'd be happy we'd be happy to come and talk with you about that at some point if you you're interested in doing that. Yeah, no, that's I, good to know. We're interested in in, in, in a couple of times in you know purchasing property to promote the agriculture, but. You know, it just didn't work out at the time. So, can I follow up yeah, on that? Yeah, please do. I think, Paul, were you at at the library a couple years ago, and we had the Massachusetts Commissioner of Agriculture there, and um, he, he spoke. I was there. Yeah, he spoke to us how APR um, started in the '60s. Um, the state was afraid of urban sprawl, and that's how come they instituted the APR. They wanted to stop the you know, construction. Um, so they gave people incentive not to uh, develop their property. Now they're on the opposite side of the fence trying to force those people to farm it. Um, and with, without much, I mean, you know, personal property rights, how do you, inf you don't want to infringe on that either. Um, but he did give us, I don't have them anymore, but he did give us uh, resources of um, connections of, you remember that, Paul? Of, um, and so maybe we can reach out to, to the commission again for information about um, grants or programs or people interested in farming. Um, so maybe that's like Joanne mentioned, the Chamber of Commerce, the Webster Dudley. So maybe the um, Massachusetts Department of Agriculture can uh, give us some information on that. There are a lot of organizations and programs to try and match up people with land to do farming. Really? Problem yeah. is, in Dudley, your APR, most of it's in hay. Yeah. And it's, a, mm -hmm. it's an income for these people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to bring in somebody, you know, there's lease and rent agreements that would have to be made. You know, there's startup costs for the people that want to be farming. Probably one of the biggest things is housing yeah. for the people that want to farm. Okay? So, if somebody's going to come in to farm an area on the lease thing, they're not going to invest two, three, four, five years in it, and then the owner throws them out or, you know, or whatever. So, you know, there's a, there is a lot of challenges. So we could almost have a separate meeting just to discuss APR land and... You, you can, <laughs> ten meetings. Ten meetings, all right. <laughs> Yeah, because a part of me, right, you have all this land, and they're, right now they're getting a tax break because it's agriculture. Mm -hmm. But if they're not really farming it and they're letting it just grow in, why are we giving them a tax break? But we want it to be farmed. And so what incentives are there, both on the state and federal level? That's the kind of input that we need professional help with because we don't know. I mean, we could do our research on the Internet and do the best we can, but does the Department of Agriculture have a federal program to help bring that land back to use for small farmers. You know, are there other federal tax breaks that are available? But it's my opinion that if, if someone's literally sitting on the APR land just to get lower property taxes and they have no intention of farming it, then it's really not APR land because eventually it's going to be forested. They, they just have to make a certain amount every year and, and they get it from the hay. They'll sell it to um, either dairy or uh, horse farms. Yeah. Horse farms are a lot of, a lot, um, they, they use a lot of that. You know how much that is? I think it's, it's very low amount. It's well, like $900. $1,000 or something. <laughs> yeah. Very minimal. Yeah. Yeah. To be considered. APR. Hmm. I don't know the exact amount, but 900 sounds close. So I didn't cut my grass all, all, all summer. Do you think maybe I can get a thousand dollars worth of hay from? Go for it. All right, okay. Paul, this is just a, a, a hypothetical. If Dudley could become the Napa Valley of Massachusetts, do you 
Do you think we would have local resistance to that? I mean, you saw what they did to the North Fork of Long Island, right? <laughs> Similar situation years ago. And now it's just wineries and vineyards and it's booming and it's a tourist destination. And we have Sturbridge right down the road. I think be honest. Be, I think it would be fantastic. <laughs> you know, it's just a question of getting the people to do it. The land available, uh, startup costs. Yeah. And financial you know, assistance. Financial assistance is probably probably one of the major, you know, uh, hurdles for a lot of these young people. Because you know, you go, we go to my wife and I go to uh, um, conferences like uh, Northeast Organic Farmers. And you go there, and like when my wife and I are the oldest people there, there's like, you know, a couple thousand young people yeah. that want to work. They have, they're innovative, they have good ideas, but they just need some help. And there are absolutely funding sources available. I actually, uh, before I came to CMRPC, I was doing some consulting work, and I actually did a job with uh, up in. Um, the southern New Hampshire where I was working with the distillery they happened to own a farm and we pursued a USDA grant because there was uh, grant money for doing value-added products so they grew some of the uh, herbals uh, that went into their gin that they were making and it was a very small amount and they qualified for it so there's definitely things that, that can be recommended and can be explored um, that that's just off the top of my head and I remember the I probably shouldn't say this in public but I remember the person talking to me at the USDA was saying please apply nobody applies for these grants so <laughs> you know so the money is definitely out there now federal money we're not quite sure how long it's going to continue to be out there but uh, for the time being I'm sure it's it's being funded and it's probably going to be something that you can pursue but that's I mean then that's just one small piece of, of what can be done with us so all right I'll open it up to anybody else. I have anything to add or want to add? All right, so, we're, so the first thing, some of us will attend the October 12th Webster Business Alliance, and then we will contact Webster Business Alliance anyhow to see if we can get an agenda item. Mm -hmm. And that's where we'll try to do our forum in conjunction with them. Yeah, that would work. Joanne, you'll get information on that uh, chamber event? Yes. All right. Uh, I can help with the top five employers, the one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. um, to give them time. And then the citizen survey, I mean, our goal, I could probably have that up in the next two weeks online. Okay, yeah, and if you, um, do you have, uh, uh, you have an online, access to an online survey platform? Uh, we'll, we'll tie it into our website, I'll find one that'll, that's okay. compatible with it, yeah. Okay, because we have access to one if you want to discuss that with We gotta we pay have. for those. What's that? You got to pay for those, right? Like Survey uh, Monkey and stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, not necessarily. Not there. I mean, if we it's, can. If it's, it's free, i will be more than happy to. The, the Survey Monkey <laughs> actually does have a free version. Really? Yeah, they do. So uh, we have the. Yeah, we send, have the version that you me. pay for, but <laughs> you can get a lot of things done with their free version. It's it's actually really it's all a right. Really good platform. Yeah, yeah, send me the link. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, I'll, if, I'll, send I'll it just to. yeah. And if you want any feedback on that, let me know, and I can okay. help assist you putting that together. It's also relatively, you can buy it like a by the month as opposed to a whole year, and it's it's relatively inexpensive. But by paying, you get you get to do more evaluations and get more data. Yeah, that's what we want. It might be worth it to spend under $100. As long as it's under $100, because well, that's going to last until <laughs> July. You get 200 responses, but you can't get all that data from them, okay. which sometimes is a limitation of the free version, mm -hmm. then it doesn't help us. All right. Well, then it's it's if you really want to if you want to try to make it a scientific survey, then you definitely need the free the the, the paid version. Um, but for just trying to get feedback, just trying to get some sort of uh, uh, you know resident input, then you know a lot of times the free one can do basically the same thing. Um, all right. And you may not have a, access to all of the online analysis tools, but you can always download it and crunch the numbers yourself. Yeah. And then like Excel, create whatever. All right. That's usually what we end up doing anyways, because I don't like the way they generate the results. Their spreadsheets don't look nice. So. Hmm. All right, anybody? Please pull. I, I just have one going back. I'm sorry, but to go back oh, no to the, uh, the APR thing in farming. Um, I don't know, it was 2016, 2015, uh, I sponsored, or the land trust sponsored a right to farm bylaw in town. Most, a lot of towns on all their, on their roads, interesting in the town, say, Dudley, 
a right to farm town, something like that. So a simple thing like that could help. And that passed with overwhelming support at Absolutely. town meeting, too. Absolutely, unanimous. So, yeah. so a simple thing like that, you know, what does it cost? A couple hundred bucks to have a few signs made up? We're trying to get $2,500 more for, to make that <laughs> left turn signal by uh, <laughs> right aid and dipping. <laughs> <laughs> that chamber event is October 24th. It's okay. an Indian ranch. I think it's four to seven. Excellent. Ron, do, do you have anything else you'd want to add or Don? What would, what would you like to do as far as the um, public interaction at your next next meeting of this group well we're going to continue the public hearing yeah and what, what one of my suggestions was going to be because you know we used to meet first thing in the morning in the mornings and then we changed it to the evenings to try to get more people to attend these and didn't see that happen so what I was thinking was maybe starting our uh, November meeting that we go back to the morning so that maybe some of the town departments or people that you know work in town can can come for the last couple of public and plus it's, it'll be winter time i don't want people driving in the snow when it's dark and in bad weather so um but you know the the public piece will start on the survey we will put a question in there you know if there was a public forum would you like to be one of the attendees or the panelists or you know the people we speak to and we'll give them the option and then we'll do is collect those email addresses and if we could set that up rather quickly see uh, both Ellen and myself have tried to see if there was a list of businesses in town already like contact information and email addresses it really isn't it's people's different Rolodexes they have this phone number or that phone number yeah. uh, but I really think the town needs to have that central database too that way, even if an emergency comes out, you can contact everybody instantly, give them a heads up on something. All right, no, All right, and right. I'm looking forward to continuing to work on this. Um, and I think uh, if you'd like, uh, oh, I also wanted to add that um, as far as the, uh, the map that we had discussed, yes. um, I apologize for that being delayed. Uh, I have a version that I had done, but it wasn't, in my opinion, substantially more useful than the one that you had. So I show, I gave it over to our, uh, our GIS department and they're gonna try to come up with something that is uh, closer to the, the examples that you guys had shown me. So I'm hoping that uh, he got delayed with a project this week. I'm hoping by next week we'll be able to have something I can email you. You know who did a fantastic job on a map is the Dudley Conservation Land Trust for trails mm -hmm. and, and the property. They're, they're not part of the town, it's a separate organization. Um, I actually spoke to Ken. I said, Ken, man, that's a great map. Where'd you get it? How much? And he was, I guess it was a very expensive map to put together. <laughs> but if you ever have a chance, look at the map. Uh, they allow us to link to it, you know, so that people can see where the trails are and the and lands for walking. But very, very well done. And, and, and a part of me says, geez, if you can do that and, and just, you know, just roughly. You don't have to get into the nitty gritty of the zone and industrial 130 here, there, mm -hmm. but just highlight business friendly areas you know it's almost like a, a t mm -hmm. for the most part and then um i'll also discuss with the board the water and sewer have invited us to their meeting and they're in the midst of actually doing a plan right now so the timing on that is pretty good mm -hmm. you were looking toward sort of the way that charlton did it right yeah yep, exactly right in their brochure when you said you sent that over to them i was like all right yeah. definitely on the same page mm -hmm. Because easy, right, friendly. Yeah. Was, yeah. We just didn't want a zoning map as our map there, especially with our zoning the way it is. Mm -hmm. No, that totally makes sense. All right. All right. Thank you, Ron, for coming in. Thank you very much. I'll open it up t to uh, the public. If anyone else has got anything else they want to add, or something for me. <laughs> All right. No, nope. <laughs> but what what I am going to do is. Uh, we have heard back from various departments, so what I'd like to do is just read some of these into the record, all right? The responses. Now, just for the, the people at home, um, let's see. 
Is that, I did print out a copy of this for everybody on this one. This was from uh, the assessor's office. Yeah, sorry. And, and just to give people a little bit of background, on uh, August 31st, uh, the Dudley Economic Development Committee sent out an email to all the various departments in town. And it basically just said, uh, we'd like to invite every department in the town of Dudley to provide input in regards to their own department goals and plans for the next five or 10 years. We are seeking input such as what investment needs does your department have? What revenue needs does your department have? In order to be world-class as far as customer service and delivery of services to your customers, I probably cut myself off here now, right? Um, bear with me. Yeah, what do you need that you do not have today? Um, does your department already have an existing five or 10 year plan? Uh, can we review and incorporate into town's master plan? As of today, we're moving in the direction that the greatest economic development area is along the route of West Main Street and the area of Schofield Avenue to Connecticut Line. Um, the mill priority as well. Um, but also, I said that we were gonna be uh, looking at the Oxford, revisiting the Oxford Ave piece as well. And I just said, you know, we really want your input. And so in, in response to that, we did get some. So um, the first one was from the assessor's office. Uh, the big thing that they needed was uh, the GIS maps online. Um, I'll second that. All right, so, so, so you see, sir, you're in to that. Yeah. Too. And, and basically uh, the maps would allow, and just you know, uh, the assessor's office was actually speaking for a couple of different departments on this the fire department planning, assessors, building, board of health, and, and highway to have the, the GIF maps online. The maps will allow us to apply multiple layers. We could zoning, parcel lots, aerial view, hydrants, minimal cost. Um, I, th I don't know if each department was $400 per year, but it would also eliminate the yearly expense of desktop GIS license and support and annual fees. Um, also prevent a lot of traffic and telephone calls in each office. and. Uh, there, you know, there is a technology theme with a number of different departments. So, you know, technology, you know, there's efficiencies that can come from it. So that's what they would like. Uh, the water sewer department, let me just go through, make sure I'm not missing anybody here. Uh, water sewer department uh, couldn't make the meeting here, but they, they do have a meeting scheduled for Wednesday, October 4th at 6.30 in room 315. I told them that I would be attending. Um, if other members of the board, I'd encourage you to attend with me. I just have to make sure that we post it if there's gonna be enough. If we're gonna have a quorum, I just have to post it as a, a legally posted meeting. So again, that's Wednesday, October 4th, 6.30, room 315. And again, they were very responsive for that. Uh, and the timing, I, I, I did print out a copy of this for each of you, just as a reminder, if you wanted to attend. Thank you, John. You're welcome. I did hear from, uh, the next one was the library. Um, that we can pass out, that's the library one. Now, I did not print out the actual library plan. Um, the, the library, uh, their primary need is uh, adequate staffing. Currently have full two-time professional staff, and four to five part-time library aides. Over the past four years, they've increased their programming and resources and seen a corresponding increase in foot traffic. Um, they had a great recommendation within this. Uh, she sent me a, le a link to uh, what they do in Shrewsbury. They actually hold these entrepreneur forums and local uh, seminars for business owners and people thinking about starting businesses and stuff. And I thought it was fantastic. And, and, and this is something that, you know, she uh, would really like to take, get off the ground here as well, which I think is a wonderful idea. Um, the main thing, they, they, they did include, it's a 17 page, five year plan that, uh, that is scheduled to be updated. Let me tell you, very good business plan. It was specific, had target dates, had exactly what needed to be done, by who, what by, what dates. Um, take a look at it, very nicely done. So what, the, what my goal is, is anybody that sends us a plan, 
when we have the final economic development plan, we will include those as attachments so that people can actually see this stuff and read it themselves. And anything that we reference throughout the plan will be referenced back to one of those existing plans. So let's see. The next one was um, from Deb Thibodeau, who actually is our IT director in town. And I don't think I printed one out for everybody. Uh, the big thing there from across the town, and she sent this not only to us, but the Capital Improvement Committee as well, is that um, the computer systems are aging that are out there. You have a lot of computers, six years old, five years old. There's 23 desktop computers, two laptops. You know, the servers, seven years old. Already switches are 10 years old. Um, so, you know, she, she did give a proposal for you know, upgrading what, what she, she would expect that to be. And, and the reason why, you know, again, we're gathering this is I know the Capital Improvement Committee is the one that totally addresses it, but again, transparency and letting people know that, you know, the town needs money to, <laughs> to run. <laughs> um, so we'll incorporate that. Uh, the next one I got, and I did print this one off, was the Dudley Cultural Council. Um, they, uh, they provided a list of services that uh, they currently receive from the town of, of Dudley, and it's basically minimal stuff, meeting room, photocopying, you know, some space for some filing documentation, cable access TV. Um, they, uh, they would like, the, and, and this is so easy for us to accomplish here, right? The Dudley Cultural Council would like more visibility to the community in terms of who we are and what we do. And we'd like to work with the appropriate people to add a link to the Cultural Council page on the down of Dudley website. That could be done in minutes. Improve the format and information posted on the Cultural Council page. Again, and post upcoming Cultural Council funded programs on cable access TV. So uh, we'll definitely, this is one we can work with and get, make this thing happen with, you know, literally overnight. We just got to figure out exactly what they want it to look like and then we'll get it done. But it was nice to, to, to see them there. Um, let me just see if I had any other ones. Uh, I've been going back and forth with the fire department. They, they have a problem over in West Dudley on uh, the Southbridge Tool and Die you know, with one of their repeaters. Um, Verizon is basically letting their copper just go. You know, everything's going wireless and, f and, and fiber optics and things like that. So uh, we are trying to find uh, an issue, to, to a solution to their issue there. The long-term solution is to eventually have fiber run to each of these repeater sites. But in the meantime, we're trying to find something that you use wireless to, uh, to make it so that there is reliable police and fire radio over there in West Dudley. So, um, so that is all I have as far as for the public record and the public hearing. Um, the one theme that did come up repeatedly as I did speak to various departments is this is great, but uh, until you can solve the school <laughs> and understand what their financial needs are and what the state does there, you can save up all this money and then have what happened in Charlton at taken at town meeting. Um, so what I think I'd really like to do is to have a meeting, a joint meeting with us in the Dudley Charlton School District and understand what is going on, what their five or 10 year plan is and make sure that we're in sync because we could be building this thing and we have a situation that occurred last year. It's all for, for naught. So the school district, we need them on board with this economic development plan. Does anybody disagree with that or any have an opinion on that? Oh, I think you're absolutely right. All right. So does anybody else have anything to add for the public hearing portion? All right. Seeing none, I am going to uh, continue the public hearing until 
October 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll do public floor. Does anybody on the floor have anything that they want to add in any way or open business or something that's not discussed here? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to leave, so I'm, yeah. I'm just, uh, uh, you know, is there anything that the, uh, the land trust could do to work with your uh, organization? Just feel free to, to call us. Uh, we're not anti-economic development. Oh, I know that. Uh, so, you know, uh, you know free, feel, feel free to let us know, and we'll be, uh, you know, we'll come down and see if we can help you guys out. I, I do have a quick question. At our last meeting, we talked about the importance of eventually having a very strong recreation committee again back in town. Absolutely. Um, do you think, and I know we, people are spread so thin with time and volunteering, but do you think that we could count on the Dudley Conservation Land Trust to help rebuild and, and build a strong recreation committee with us? Absolutely. All right. That's great to know. Thank you. Um, you know, we feel that, you know, bringing people into town to our sanctuaries is economic development. Yeah. So All right. that's where we're at. Great. Thanks, Paul. Awesome. Have a nice day. Yeah, thank are you. you. Are you aware of the, uh, the uh, exercise that CMRPC is going through right now with the regional trails plan? Uh, no, not right. I'm not familiar with it. Okay, we, we can talk about it. Are you heading out? Yeah, I'm going to miss out. I'll actually follow you out. Yeah. All right. Thank Thanks, Brent. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Hey, Don. Oh, what's that? I'm sorry. I gotta turn that yeah, off. I'm, I'm blinded. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm projected. <laughs> um, I was about to head out. Do you want to stick around for? Oh, sorry. Unplug it. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. When in doubt. Yep. Unplug it. <laughs> That's my solution. <laughs> uh, all right. Next on the agenda. Uh, the Dudley town bylaws were just updated, which means that the attorney general must have signed off on everything. Mm -hmm. So that means we now have the ability to appoint two alternate members. Oh, good. All right. So uh, we did get uh, an, an inquiry from a Brian Lebrec. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with him. No. But uh, he is interested. Uh, typically on Wednesdays, he has, you know, things in the evening as well. But... I told him uh, that you know, I'll get in touch with him. We'll get a resume, mm -hmm. and then um, with our alternate members, how it works is we have the ability to appoint the alternate member. If the alternate member ever steps in because someone's not here on a permanent basis, then it's us and the board of selectmen that have to vote on them. All right. So th that's good news. In regards to that. Um, Terms. Does everybody know when their terms expire? No. I, I, I said the town clerk, if you can't remember. I, yeah, I, I don't know. And, and so, because what, what technically should be happening here is uh, we should make sure all our members are still members, <laughs> you know, their terms haven't expired, and once a year the board should be reorganizing. You know, as you add new members, so if someone else wants to become chairman or mm -hmm. vice chairman or treasurer, that we have the ability to do that. So for our next meeting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out from Aura when terms expire. If someone's term has expired, I will reach out to you so she that you can get reappointed. She normally will tell you when your, your appointment is coming up. She's pretty good like okay. that. Okay. All right. So then at our next meeting, uh, we should plan on having a uh, reorganization vote of the committee too. So believe me, if anyone wants to be chairman, well, I'm, you, I'm with you. You realize this could be like the Board of Assessors where Conrad has been the chairman for a lifetime commitment. <laughs> he can't get off. No, no, let him no, off. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to vary things up. <laughs> been there already, right, Joanne? Yeah. <laughs> um, manufacturing day, um, we were gonna, we really wanted to get this thing done, but life has a way of having personal issues come up and injuries and, and deaths, I'm sorry, Ellen. And, uh, so we're gonna postpone that until 2018. We're gonna make a concerted effort and we're gonna try to do that. It'll probably be like the first week in October. Okay, can I make a suggestion? 
sure. question. You said that you were going to reach out to the uh, five top employees in town. Yep. Um, why not give give them the brochure that we have? <laughs> That's a great idea. You know, up well, front. Since we're going to be talking to them anyhow, right. put it already on their radar yeah. about for next year. Yeah, yeah. great idea. All right, so got that done, that done. Um, the brochure, uh, good news about the map. Once the map's there, and then uh, I know Pam's got, you know, the person that's been working on is back from Poland right now. So possibility, we might have a close to final draft at the next meeting, right? I hope so, Pam. Yeah, again, yep. who knows what life is like. <laughs> Water so that is all I have. Does anybody or any member here have any new business that they'd like to bring up? I do not. Now, Todd, I was going to ask you and Joanne and Ellen to put an application together for the Amazon headquarters for 50,000 <laughs> employees. That sounds great. I'll call, Jeff, I'll call Jeff Bezos right after this meeting. <laughs> I actually shot an email to Greg. I think the person that brought up about having some kind of a little uh, phrase about your town is a great thing. I think that's, uh, Oxford has that. I just put it on a postcard. I listed a commercial site, and it was one of the, and I kept thinking, why do I know this? And it's because I drive by the sign three times a day, probably. <laughs> I think some of those little tidbits kind of help you to, to move business forward. So I think that was, uh, I think that was what Mr. Wheelock was mentioning on it. That would be a good one for the selectmen to really look at what could be something good we could say about the town other than saying low taxes. It's <laughs> not going to cut it forever. This is true. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I guess the, the state has, originally Boston was going to do their own application, and then Worcester was going to do theirs, and then the state is actually doing an application on behalf of Massachusetts and Boston and Worcester are it's almost, it's almost almost like a partnership type bid for mm -hmm. this so we'll watch that closely because if worcester or boston gets this it could create an opportunity here mm -hmm. you know a little dudley as well yeah you know so but yeah can you imagine fifty thousand employees yeah. that little dip in donuts traffic light would be a nightmare it <laughs> certainly would fifty five thousand employees fifty thousand employees wow $5 billion investment. Did we forget the minutes? Oh, yes, we did. Mm. Handed them out, right? Mm. Oh, here's the save the date on October 12th. That was that event that I talked about previously. <laughs> I'll hand that out. Is there a... Uh, you know, a motion to uh, accept the minutes of August 16th. Make a motion. Second. All right, Ellen has made the motion. Join a second. It. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 So the minutes are approved there. Ellen, Joanne. All right, does anybody have anything that they'd like to add or bring up to anything in any way? All right, seeing none. Motion. Make a motion to adjourn. All right, Joanne's made the motion to adjourn. Second. Ellen has seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Dan, you should come up here and introduce yourself. He just